It's the African History Network, the African History Network, and my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. It is Friday, July 23rd, 2021, and we are live. So I was on uh, Roland Martin Unfiltered today, as I norm normally am on uh, Fridays. And I'm going to share a couple of segments of Roland Martin Unfiltered uh, with you. So you may have heard about the statue of KKK leader and the Ku Klux Klan's reported first grand, grand wizard, Nathan Bedford Forrest. Nathan Bedford Forrest in Tennessee. Okay, the volunteer state, Tennessee. Well, after uh, it's been up for uh, a little over four decades, that statue has been taken down from the Tennessee State Capitol building. It happened today. Uh, we know there were stories of uh, leading up to it taking place uh, on All In with Chris Hayes on uh, Wednesday. Um, oh, well, actually Thursday. So, so Thursday, July 22nd, he did a story about this, uh, about the statue coming down. And Nathan Bedford Forrest was one of the biggest traitors to this country. And he also... Uh, was involved in the Fort Pillow Massacre, the Fort Pillow Massacre uh, that took place during the uh, U.S. Civil War uh, on April 12, uh, 1864, in which some 300 African-American soldiers were killed, okay? The Fort Pillow Massacre. So we'll talk about the statue of Nathan Bedford Forrest coming down today, and that's a good thing. We'll also deal with some of the history of the Confederate monuments and Confederate statues and why they were put up, because the majority of them were erected after long after the Civil War ended in uh, 1865. Then uh, the Cleveland Indians, the Cleveland Indians Major League Baseball team changed their name from the Indians to the Guardians. It was announced today. Um We'll talk about that change. We talked about it on Roland Martin the Filter today. Yeah, some conservatives that are giving backlash. We know uh, Benedict Donald, the trade in chief, he had to uh, he had to comment on it also. He doesn't like the change, but keep in mind, the trade in chief, um, he did not want to change the names of um, military bases that were named after Confederate uh, heroes and Confederate generals. He didn't want to change uh, the names of, uh, of military bases as well. So we'll talk about the uh, Cleveland Indians, uh, the Cleveland uh, Major League Baseball team changing their name. And we'll also talk about the Fort Pillow massacre, the Civil War massacre at Fort Pillow that uh, that uh, killed some estimates are 300, uh, almost 300 um African-American soldiers were killed at Fort Pillow. We'll talk about that as well. And uh, we'll give you an update on the new online course, 10 week online course that I'm teaching on Saturdays. Starts up Saturday, uh, July 24th, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, this is from the Civil War to uh, Civil Rights and Black Power, 1865 to uh, 1968. And this is a new 10 week online course that I'm teaching. And uh, each class will go through and analyze a 10 year period of time in history. We'll go through history chronologically, uh, dealing with the last year of the Civil War and uh, 40 Acres and a Mule, Special Field Order number 15. And we'll deal with Juneteenth and the assassination of Lincoln and uh, the 13th Amendment and um, Reconstruction era. And we'll go throughout history analyzing a 10 year period of time each class and understanding how we got to where we are today and to better understand where we need to go from here. OK, so we'll give you more information about that. And you can uh, visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com and register for that online course there uh, from the Civil War to uh, Civil Rights and Black Power. 1865 to 1968. All right. Now on the uh, African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world, because right now it's correct your own behavior, what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself and what you allow other people to do to you 
and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard and seen about yourself. So when you control the radius of a man or woman's thoughts, you can control the compass of his or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. Now, we deal with a number of different topics here on the African History Network show. We do a current events and history and politics, education, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, relationships, love, sex, health issues and much, much more. Sign up for our email newsletter. Text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, the 22828. To sign up for our email newsletter, text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, the 22828. To sign up for our email newsletter or visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All right, I want to jump into um, this first story. So uh, I was looking at a number of different um, sources, uh, different news sources reporting uh, on the statue for, about Nathan Bedford Forrest. We're going to go to clip one here, Ed. Um, but Fox Channel 17 out of Nashville, Tennessee, has a... Um, article dealing with this bust of uh, bust of KKK leader Nathan Bedford Forrest removed from Tennessee Capitol. OK, so we'll go to that clip here in uh, just a minute. I want to go to uh, clip number one. This is from All In with Chris Hayes on MSNBC from July 22nd, 2021. Uh, KKK leader bust fin finally being removed from Tennessee Capitol. Nathan Bedford Forrest is not uh, is not some on the bubble figure. He was one of the most controversial and loathed men in, in the country uh, in his time. He was a despicable war criminal. And it is about time that this monument to him and the evil he stood for comes down. And that's a direct quote from Chris Hay Chris Hayes. Let's go to this clip. And take it off mute. Of American history, and you may not know too much about him, depending on um, what you learned in school. So, quick recap: He's a plantation owner and a slave trader who joined the Confederate Army at the start of the Civil War and quickly became a general. His most infamous act in that position in the war came at the Battle of Fort Pillow, that's in 1864, when Nathan Bedford Forrest's soldiers slaughtered hundreds of Union troops many of them black, and many of whom were attempting to surrender. It was an atrocity. It was recognized as such at the time. This is an article from the New York Herald on April 14th, 1864, telling of a horrific massacre, the dead and wounded burned by Confederate forces. It reverberated throughout the country as one of the most vile, despicable crimes of the Civil War. But Nathan Bedford Forrest wasn't done yet. After the Confederacy was defeated, Forrest managed to escape justice. He was not imprisoned nor executed. He went back to civilian life and became an early member of the Ku Klux Klan. In fact, he was the first and most notorious Grand Wizard of the KKK. In 1978, over 100 years after Forrest's death, the Tennessee State Capitol installed a bust in his honor. The bust as you might imagine, immediately drew opposition and protest, as well as support from, well, the KKK, who are pictured here holding a press conference in front of it in 1980. They, of course, would love to see one of their former members represented in the state capitol, wouldn't they? A whole lot of people have been trying to get rid of Nathan Bedford Forrest's bust ever since it was installed. Their efforts were continuously met with resistance. Regular protests have been going on since 2015. Tennessee State Representative London Lamar was part of that fight. Earlier this year, she told us why removing the bust was so important to her. Every day I have to walk in to make legislation for all people of Tennessee. I have to walk past the Klansmen before I go into the People's House. Our state capital is recognizing and supporting the first Grand Wizard of the KKK in a building that should be a building where all people can feel that we are entering these chambers to represent them and make their lives better. Well, today, finally, we got word the bust will be removed. State Building Commission voted 5-2 to two to approve the relocation of the Forest Bus to the Tennessee State Museum. Those two no votes were from Republican House Speaker and Lieutenant Governor. This afternoon, crews began preparing for the move. 
again, Nathan Bedford Forrest is not some on the bubble figure like, oh, you're projecting back your modern sensibilities. You have a complicated legacy. He was one of the most controversial and loathed men in the country in his time. He was a despicable war criminal. And it is about time this monument to him and the evil he stood for comes down. Okay. Um, pause right there. All right. So that is from uh, All In with Chris Hayes from uh, Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. We have a picture up here of uh, Tennessee State Representative London Lam London Lamar. She's a Democrat, of course. Uh, I'm just saying, of course, because she wouldn't be a Republican trying to take down the uh, statue. OK, <laughs> so. Uh, we're going to talk some more about Nathan Bedford Force as well uh, on the other side of the break. But if we look at. Uh, so the statue came down today. The statue came down today. And if we look at this piece here from uh, Fox Channel 17 in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, it's important to note the Ku Klux Klan was founded in Tennessee. The Ku Klux Klan was founded December 24th, 1865 in Pulaski, Tennessee, Christmas Eve. All right. Some sources say 1866, but most sources will say 1865. December 24th, 1865 is when is when the Ku Klux Klan was founded. Um, if you look at this article here from Fox Channel 17, bust of KKK leader Nathan Bedford Forrest removed from Tennessee Capitol. So that uh, for the first time since the 1970s, the Tennessee Capitol is no longer home to a bust of early Ku Klux Klan leader and Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest. After years of controversy, the bust was officially removed Friday morning, July 23rd, 2021. The bust of the Confederate General and KKK Grand Wizard, hold on, what happened here? The bust of the Confederate General and KKK Grand Wizard, um, will sit in the cap uh will sit uh, of kkk grand wizard still sat in the capital month after a months after a vote to remove it and two other statues now thursday's vote thursday july 22nd thursday's vote from the state building commission was the final step needed to remove for its removal it's slated to be moved to the tennessee state museum now i've said before that all of these confederate monuments all these confederate statues need to come down now some people say oh it's history it's things like this yeah 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 it is history i agree it is history it's history of the traitors to the union is history of those who committed treason against the union based upon article three section three of the u.s constitution that history needs to be taught the entire history of the civil war what led up to the civil war and the reconstruction era and the conspiracy between the republicans and the democrats to end reconstruction and to end the progress that african americans were making all that needs to be taught Every last one of these Confederate monuments needs to come down, the Confederate statues, because we know July 10th in Charlottesville, Virginia, they removed the statues of General Robert E. Lee and Thomas Stonewall Jackson. I talked about this on Roland Martin Unfiltered today. I'll share that clip with you on the other side of the break. Uh, all these statues need to go into museums. They need to, they should not be destroyed. They need to go into museums because that history has to be taught. In the place of those statues, when you take them down, in the place of those monuments, you need to put historical markers that tell what was there and why it was taken down. You can put another statue in this place of somebody that wasn't a traitor to the union. You can do that. But we have to deal with the real history and fight against this lost cause myth that was financed largely by the United Daughters of the Confederacy. OK, after the Civil War ends and changes. It, it, they, they pushed this revisionary that the Civil War, uh, the South was fighting to for states rights. No, you you wanted to maintain slavery because in your statements of secession, you talked about how slavery was essential to your way of life. We'll deal with all this on the other side of the break. Listen to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the future radio. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes.
Stand by, everybody. Stand by. Share this broadcast on your social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in also. So this is the type of information that we're going to get into also in my uh, new online course um, from the Civil War to uh, from the Civil War to uh, Civil Rights and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. This is some of the type of history that we're going to get uh, deal with. All right. Uh, you can. I just posted a link here. You can register for the uh, online course. We also have it at my website right on the home page, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. When you scroll down the page, click on register here and you can register register for the 10 week online course. OK, stand by. We're we'll back from break in just a minute here. How's everybody doing? Who still needs to register for the course? Okay, we've got Andrew, we've got Robert, we have Danielle. How's everybody doing? Okay, stand by. I'm back from break in two minutes. Stand by. Share this broadcast uh, on your social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in also. At Kenya. So this new class picks up where uh, my other class leaves off. Nine ten. The Superstation, Detroit's only African American talk radio. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 910 AM, the Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Friday, July 23rd, 2021, and we are live. Right before the break, we were talking about the removal of the bust that happened in uh, Tennessee today, Tennessee State Capitol, uh, the removal of the uh, noted Klansman and um, civil uh, traitor to the union, uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest. His bust was removed today from um, the uh, Tennessee State Capitol. And he's reported to be the uh, also the first um, Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan as well. OK. Uh, his bust has been there since his bust has been there since um, 1970. For the first time since the 1970s, the uh, Tennessee uh, State Capitol is no longer home to a bust of early Ku Klux Klan leader and Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest. After years of controversy, the bust was officially removed Friday morning, July 23rd, 2021. OK, now and this is some of the type of histories because this deals with the Civil War. This is some of the type of history I'm going to deal with in uh, my the 10 week online course uh, that I teach. And it starts up uh, Saturday, July 24th, 2021 uh, from the Civil War to civil rights and black power from the Civil War to civil rights and black power. Uh, we'll deal with a little more than 100 years of history. Each class will go through and analyze a 10 year period of time including the Civil War and Reconstruction and, and uh, the Jim Crow era, the Compromise of 1877, which is a conspiracy between the Republicans and the Democrats. And uh, Republicans agreed to remove the Union troops out of the South that were enforcing the uh, rights of newly freed uh, African-Americans to a certain extent. And this is then going to allow uh, the South to take back full control of the state legislatures and their governments and things like this and impose white supremacy and Jim Crow laws. If you go to our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, scroll down the page, we have the information uh, there from the Civil War to Civil Rights, uh, from the Civil War to the Civil Rights and Black Power. And uh, click on register here. And as soon as you, um, and then click on enroll on the next page, as soon as you register, you can we have bonus content. You can start watching and, and enroll you in the 
uh, online course, okay? Um, we do the classes live, all the sessions are recorded. We do the classes live, all the sessions are recorded and archived, so you can go back and watch them over and over again, okay? And then even after the class is over with, you still have, you can still go back and watch the course. So next year, you can still go back and watch the course. All right, then also if you wanna support the African History Network, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, or through PayPal, paypal.me, forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. We'll post the uh, link here also. Okay, uh, so I want to go back to the article here from um, Fox 17, Fox Channel 17 in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, they have a good article here dealing with the removal of the bust of uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest. And people have been working uh, hard to get that uh, bust taken down as well. If we go back here and look at uh, the reporting. So uh, Governor Bill Lee of uh, Tennessee and uh, others voted yes. Uh, they, they agreed to uh, remove it. But Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally and House Speaker Cameron Sexton voted no. Uh, on removing it. So it's very interesting. So we, we see these cultural, what are called cultural wars. Um, and we see this coming from the GOP. We see this coming from Republicans. And it's largely coming from people who are ignorant of history. Largely coming from people who are ignorant of history. Um, Lieutenant Governor uh, Rand McNally said, quote, trying to change past generations trying to change past generations uh no this is uh house speaker cameron sexton who said this house speaker cameron sexton trying to change past generations actions based on today's values and the evolution of societies is not an exercise i am willing to do because i think it is counterproductive uh house speaker Cameron Sexton said in a statement, quote, it is much more productive to learn from our past and not repeat the imperfections of the past. Any attempt to erase any attempt to erase the past only aligns society with the teaching of communism, which believes the present dominates the past. What the hell does communism have to do with this? You're talking about a traitor to the union. See, this is what happens when you have white supremacists and ha and, and, who got their hoods taken off. He doesn't want to take down a statue. He voted no against taking down a statue to a traitor to the union. OK, this is this. The, the, the Confederacy took up arms against the union and they committed treason based upon Article three, Section three of the U.S. Constitution. They committed treason against the union. They had to be given a blanket pardon by President Andrew Johnson after the Civil War ended and after uh, uh, Lincoln was assassinated, April 14th, 1865. So to say that this is the standards, he, he talked about the standards of the day. No, he violated the standards of back then. He violated the standards back in the 1860s because the because the Confederacy committed treason against the Union. Not only that, you had. People in the north, you had soldiers in the Union who were fighting against the South, so you had millions of people. Who disagreed with. Nathan Bedford Forrest and the Confederacy stance. Those who fought in the war and then those who in the north supporting the war effort who disagree. So we, we you don't have to look at today's standards. You can look at the standards back in 1861, 1862, 1863 and 1864 and 1865. He was against a lot of those standards back then. Then when we talk about the Fort Pillow massacre. And then killing uh, uh, African-American Union soldiers, many of them trying to surrender. 
So see, see, this is an example of how elections have consequences. So when you have somebody like House Speaker uh, Cameron Sexton, who says this, this is this is somebody who who's voting on uh, bills and voting on laws in Tennessee that impacts the lives of African-Americans. This is what happens when your hood gets pulled off. He said it is. OK, I want to make sure you can see this. Yeah, you can see this. He said, quote, it is much more productive to learn from. Our, let, me, let me read this full statement. Quote, trying to judge past generations actions based on today's values and the evolution of societies is not an exercise I'm willing to do because I think it's kind of productive. Well, he was against a lot of the views back then. Because there were millions of people who disagreed with him. Quote, it is much more productive to learn from our past and not repeat the imperfections of the past. Any attempt to erase the past only aligns society with the teaching of communism. They had to throw that word in there, communism. Now, he probably can't tell you what communism is, which believes the present dominates the past. I'm surprised he didn't throw critical race theory in there. He go now, now Lieutenant Governor Rand McNally, who also um, uh, voted uh, no as well. He said, oh, my position on the bust of Nathan Bedford Forrest has been clear and consistent over a number of years. I believe the context is needed, but not removal. I believe that context is needed, but not removal. No one is arguing that Nathan Bedford Forrest is not a problematic figure. He is, but there is more to his story. His life eventually followed a redemptive arc, which I hope is outlined in great detail in our state museum. See, they're going to have a state museum dedicated to white supremacists, apparently. See, once again, these two guys are lawmakers. Neither one of them said this guy was a traitor to the union. That's not me saying that. This is what they said back then. The, the Confederacy. They were traitors. Nations don't have statues honoring traitors to the union. His life eventually followed a redemptive arc, which I hope is outlined in great detail in our state museum. He went on to say, quote, this is now this is the lieutenant governor of Tennessee. This is somebody else. Y'all need to vote out of office down in Tennessee. He said, this is not the end. It is the beginning. Oh, you mean the South shall rise again? He said the left will move on to the next figure or monument and demand that we again kneel at the altar of political correctness. This is the guy that slaughtered African-Americans. You talking about political correctness? Lieutenant Governor Rand McNally. You need a map to find your conscience. While the governor and the constitutional officers did not stand with me today. I hope they will next time because more fights are coming. Yeah, you want to understand white supremacy. Uh, we're going to go to clip one again. We read clip clip one. Ed. I want people to hear this because in a minute we're going to get into the Fort Pillow massacre. Which a uh, uh, massacre that uh, uh, the, 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 the um, redeemed um, Nathan Bedford Forrest. First Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, uh, 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 he, he led this massacre, okay? We're going to go to that in just a second. Now, Representative Antonio Parkinson, chairman of the Tennessee Black Caucus of State Legislatures, issued the following statement on the vote. It, now, he, now, I don't know Antonio Parkinson personally. He probably wanted to channel Della Reese from Harlem Knights when they came out to jail and she said, kiss my entire ass. She, he probably wanted to, he probably wanted to, <laughs> he probably wanted to channel Della Reese. Okay. <laughs> he said, quote, we are appreciative that the state building commission has done the right thing in voting to remove the Nathan Bedford Forrest bust from his position in the most powerful building on our land, the Tennessee state Capitol. While this move signifies a great first step 
in beginning to heal our divided state, we understand that this is a sensitive matter to some and a symbolic victory to others. Yeah, because you got white supremacists, they have their feelings hurt, okay? You, you, white, white supremacists have, have their feelings hurt, okay? Uh, Melanie Fiona, listen to her song. She said, uh, pick up your feelings. Yeah, you, they, they have their little feelings hurt. We also understand that there is a bigger issue at stake, and this is becoming a Tennessee where all people feel welcome and free to thrive and prosper. Now let's get back to the business of improving access to quality health care, providing a quality education for all residents, and putting money into the households of hardworking, hardworking Tennesseans. Now, this so that was a statement from um, Representative Van Tonkinson, chairman of the Tennessee uh, Black Caucus of State Legislatures. Legislators. Now, last month, last month, workers removed the remains of Nathan Bedford Forrest and his wife from a Tennessee park, marking another step in the process of moving their bodies out of Memphis, Tennessee, and to a museum hundreds of miles away. The remains are being moved to the net to the National Confederate Museum at Elm Springs in Columbia. See, they have a National Confederate Museum. Now, the remains of Nathan Bedford Forrest and his wife were moved from a Memphis cemetery and buried under the statue of the former Memphis City Council member in 1904. The city took down the statue in December uh, 2017 after selling the public park to a nonprofit group, thus circumventing a state law barring the removal of historic monuments from public access. All right. Um, the state museum says the three busts will be displayed together as part of a new exhibit. The museum is starting highlighting artifacts from brought from the state capitol. Oh, they're going to, I, I, I bet you they're going to have, uh, some civil war reenactments. I bet you they're going to have some civil war reenactments of, um, of Confederate soldiers and things like this. I bet you they're going to, they're going to have a good old, they're going to have a good old time. You know, if, if you live in Tennessee, if, if when, when they, when they have that whole unveiling and all that stuff, if you, if you, if, if you want to make some money in Tennessee, you should get a stand out there selling moonshine and snuff. <laughs> okay. Cause you're going to sell out. If you, if you, if you can, if you can get a stand selling moonshine and snuff. Okay. You're going to sell out. I'm, I'm telling you right now. Um, I, I want to go back to this clip here from all in with Chris Hayes. This deals with the truth about Nathan Bedford Forrest that some people are just so in love with and don't want to take his bus down because it's just going to hurt our feelings. Let's go to this clip. Forrest is one of the greatest villains of American history, and you may not know too much about him, depending on uh, what you learned in school. So quick recap. He's a plantation owner and a slave trader who joined the Confederate Army at the start of the Civil War and quickly became a general. His most infamous act in that position in the war came at the Battle of Fort Pillow, that's in 1864, when Nathan Bedford Forrest soldiers slaughtered hundreds of Union troops, many of them black, and many of whom were attempting to surrender. It was an atrocity. It was recognized as such at the time. This is an article from the New York Herald on April 14th, 1864, telling of a horrific massacre, the dead and wounded burned by Confederate forces. It reverberated throughout the country as one of the most vile, despicable crimes of the Civil War. But Nathan Bedford Forrest wasn't done yet. After the Confederacy was defeated, Forrest managed to escape justice. He was not imprisoned nor executed. He went back to civilian life and became an early member of the Ku Klux Klan. In fact, he was the first and most notorious Grand Wizard of the KKK. In 1978, over 100 years after Forrest's death, the Tennessee State Capitol installed a bust in his honor. The bust, as you might imagine, immediately drew opposition and protest, as well as support from, well, the KKK, 
who are pictured here holding a press conference in front of it in 1980. They, of course, would love to see one of their former members represented in the state capitol, wouldn't they? A whole lot of people have been trying to get rid of Nathan Bedford Forrest's bust ever since it was installed. Their efforts were continuously met with resistance. Regular protests have been going on since 2015. Tennessee State Representative London Lamar was part of that fight. Earlier this year, she told us why removing the bust was so important to her. Every day I have to walk in to make legislation for all people of Tennessee. I have to walk past the Klansmen before I go into the People's House. Our state capital is recognizing and supporting the first Grand Wizard of the KKK in a building that should be a building where all people can feel that we are entering these chambers to represent them and make their lives better. Well, today, finally, we got word the bust will be removed. The State Building Commission voted 5-2 to, to approve the relocation of the Forest Bus to the Tennessee State Museum. Those two no votes were from Republican House Speaker and Lieutenant Governor. This afternoon, crews began preparing for the move. Again, Nathan Bedford Forrest is not some on-the-bubble figure like, oh, you're projecting back your modern sensibilities. You had a complicated legacy. He was one of the most controversial and loathed men in the country in his time. He was a despicable war criminal. And it is about time this monument to him and the evil he stood for comes down. Okay, that's uh, from All In with Chris Hayes from Thursday, July 22nd. 2021 um that's at msnbc.com so check out that clip uh also i, I want to pull up this uh, article here from the washington post um it, it, there's a good article by deneen l brown uh from the washington post that deals with the fort pillow massacre we'll talk about fort pillow here in in just a minute and there's a uh uh, some good information at history.com, the official website of the History Channel, also on uh, the Fort Pillow Massacre. But this piece right here from uh, Deneen L. Brown, the Civil War massacre that left nearly 200 black soldiers murdered. The Civil War massacre that left nearly 200 black soldiers murdered. Okay. And this deals with the Fort Pillow Massacre and Major General Nathan Bedford Forrest. Now, I noticed in, in, in the remarks from the lieutenant governor and, and the House Speaker who voted no on removing the uh, uh, the bust of um, uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest. They ain't talking about him uh, killing African-Americans, slaughtering them at Fort Pillow. They ain't talking about none of that. They ain't talking about him being a slave trader. He became wealthy as a slave trader. They ain't talking about nothing like that. I just find that interesting. They just left that history. They want to keep this history over here. All that other history over there. We don't want. We don't want to talk about that at all. Okay. We want to keep the bus. Okay. We, we don't want to talk about the fact he was a traitor to the union and took up arms to maintain slavery. All right, and killed African Americans and and, and made his money trading slaves. We, no, we don't. We don't want to deal with none of that. He was a complicated man. Only his woman could understand him. He was really a nice guy once you get to know him and get past all the slaves walking around and killing black people. Once you get past all that, he was really a nice guy. In a petition, workers explained that not only was the man featured in the painting a Confederate general, but he was none other, none other than Major General Nathan Bedford Forrest, a ruthless slave trader, the first grand wizard in the Ku Klux Klan, and the man who led the Confederate forces in a bloody Civil War battle in 1864 that became known as the Fort Pillow Massacre. The controversy over the painting led to uh, two more questions. What is Fort Pillow and what happened there? The, 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 the battle to regain Fort Pillow on April 12, 1864, when Nathan Bedford Forrest led 2,500 Confederate cavalry in an attack on the fort about 40 miles north of Memphis, Tennessee, according to um, uh, uh, according to the uh, National Park Service, the fort was held by Union troops, including 295 white soldiers and 262 uh, quote unquote colored so soldiers under the command of Major Lionel F. Booth, Major Lionel, Lionel F. Booth. The Confederates, including sharpshooters, un unleashed a storm of bullets on the fort, killing uh, uh, Booth. Nathan Bedford Forrest demanded unconditional surrender. Although outnumbered by the Confederate soldiers, Major William F. Bradford, who had taken command of the Union troops, refused to surrender. 
quote, Confederates renewed the attack, soon overran the fort and drove the Federals down the rivers, uh, down the river's blood a deadly crossfire, according to the National Park Service. As many as 300 Union soldiers, including 200 African-American soldiers, were killed. Many were shot point blank in the head, but he's just a complicated man that nobody understands but his woman. He's really a nice guy once you get to know him. You just, you trying to judge him based upon today's standards. No, they were, no, there were people disagreeing with what he did back then. Uh, Mark Lemming was the highest ranking union officer to survey the battle. His eyewitness account written nearly 30 years later on April 14th, 1893 would stand as a testament to what happened at Fort Pillow. Okay. Um, read this article here from Deneen L. Brown civil war massacre that left nearly 200 black soldiers murdered. This is the Fort Pillow massacre in April, 1864 during the civil war and major general Nathan Bedford Forrest led his troops and they, they slaughtered these, these union soldiers, many of them African-American soldiers. Uh, I want to go to clip two here. This is from Roland Martin and Filter today. Uh, we talked about the uh, Cleveland uh, Indians, Cleveland uh, Major League Baseball team, changing their name to the uh, Guardians. And then we also talked about the removal of the bust of um, white supremacist, KKK Grand Wizard, role model for some people. Role model for some people's children. Nathan Bedford for us. Let's go to this clip. Where the, uh, the Cleveland Indians uh, baseball team, they have decided that they are going to uh, change uh, their name. Uh, they are no longer going to be called the Cleveland Indians. They're going to be called the Cleveland Guardians. This is going. This is going to be their uh, new logo. This has been one of the things that has been talked about uh, for quite some time uh, to get these uh, sports teams to stop using um, the American Indians as their mascots. Uh, Amen. Uh, this, but but uh, but but you always got to. It's always great uh, to have really stupid people, and one of the most stupidest people. Um, is um, Rich Lowry. Rich Lowry um, of the National Review, let's just say um, he's clueless. In fact, he, he posted his tweet here. Um, and just like that, the Indians adopt the dumbest, most pointless name in major professional sports. Well, but let's just say, Michael, he got lit up all across social media because people said, Rich, have you ever heard of the Utah Jazz? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no one, no one equates Utah with jazz. Right. right. And for those who don't know, it, the New Orleans basketball team used to be called the New Orleans Jazz. That made sense. And then they moved to Utah and they kept the jazz part. Yeah, that may not. Just like if you really want to be honest, the Los Angeles Lakers is pretty a stupid name. Because <laughs> they were the Minneapolis Lakers, which actually made sense because, you know, the, the, the Great Lakes, I think right. kind of makes sense. Um, the Arizona Cardinals, pretty dumb name. Because that's not really who they are. Um... Trying to think, you got, you got a few other just absolutely. Um, I mean, obviously, you used to have the New Orleans Hornets because it came from Charlotte. Then they changed their name to the New Orleans Pelicans. Kind of makes sense. Then you had the Charlotte Bobcats, and that was only because Bob Johnson owned the team, mm -hmm. which is one of the biggest disasters by, you know, uh, in, in Charlotte uh, sports history. But yeah, <laughs> these folks love complaining about something. And I'm just trying to understand, so, Rich, you, you, you want it? And, in fact, uh, that idiot Trump even put out, I think he put a video out or, or some kind of press release complaining about the name. Okay, really? See, this is, well, this is what I keep saying, Michael. What they don't like is now that we now have a voice and we get to decide things, it's bothering them that we're changing these symbols of white supremacy 
That's right. That's what's driving them crazy. Well, absolutely. You just had the the statues of General Robert E. Lee and, Th- and Thomas Stonewall Jackson taken down in Charlotte. Ah, uh, ah, uh, speaking, speaking, and speaking of one of those, could y'all please roll the video of the, the, the decapitation in Tennessee <laughs> of uh, Nathan Bedford <laughs> Forrest uh, as his bust was being rolled out. Could y'all have a video, please? Why y'all have a video? I sent to y'all earlier. What's the whole point of me sending a video? Y'all ain't got it. Uh, Michael, go ahead. I'll find a video. Go ahead, Michael. <laughs> so, what, what you have here, this, this, the name should have been changed. Now, from my understanding, Guardians comes from some statues that are there in, in Cleveland or something like that. So, I knew uh, Trump was going to uh, say something because he's an irrelevant person trying to stay relevant. He's been knocked off of social media, rightfully so. Um, yeah, they should change the name. Uh, they should change the name of the Detroit Lions to the Detroit Scaredy Cats or something like that, too. It's terrible as they are, but, you know, I ain't watched football since, like, 2016 or something like that. So Colin Kaepernick got put out the league 2016, 2017, and I don't even watch the Super Bowl. But you had uh, you have Confederate monuments being taken down, General Robert E. Lee, Thomas Stonewall Jackson in Charlottesville, Virginia. And when you study General Robert E. Lee, the Atlantic has a really good article called The Myth of the Kindly General Robert E. Lee. General Robert E. Lee was against Confederate monuments, even though it was dedicated to him. So you had the Unite the Right rally, these 12 white supremacist organizations in August 2017. They are trying to save a statue dedicated to a man who didn't want a statue. And they had the Confederate battle flag in Northern Virginia under General Robert E. Lee's army, which is not even the Confederate flag. Lastly, Charlottesville, Virginia is named after an African woman, Queen Charlotte Sophia, who was the wife of King George III, who was the king that the 13 colonies were voting against. She was of African Moorish ancestry on her mother's side of the family. So they would probably have a fit if they found out Charlottesville was named after an African woman. Uh, but they, you know, look, first of all, you, Kelly, you're asking dumb people to read. So that's just <laughs> not going to happen. I mean, <laughs> what do you want to say? Because I, I, I have yet to meet a smart racist. I mean, that's just how it is. No, I disagree. I've 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 met manipulative racists. I've met vindictive racists. I've met racists who have support of other races and therefore now have power. But as far as an intelligent, smart racist, no, I have not. Unfortunately, I have, and that's why one of the fears. Uh, of some folks is that you're going to have one of these uh, sane, smart racists who use mm-hmm. the same thing that Trump did to get elected uh, to run uh, in order to run the White House. And part of the deal, and it might work because we have people who are unwilling uh, to own up to the sheer stupidity of some of these people. But uh, that's, uh, that's the whole piece. All right. Pa- so pause it right there. An announcer. Pause it right there. Okay. Uh, so that's from Roland Martin and the filter. Uh, that's from uh, today. Uh, watch that on uh, YouTube, Roland Martin on YouTube and uh, Roland Martin on Facebook. We'll post a link here to the full show. That's from July 23rd. Uh, read this article here from the Atlantic.com. The myth of the kindly General Lee, the myth of the kindly General Lee. We talked about this a couple of days ago. The legend of the Confederate leaders, heroism and decency is based in the fiction of a person who never existed. This is by Adam Sewer for uh, the Atlantic.com uh, from June 4th, 2017. The myth of the kindly General Lee, the legend of the Confederate leader, leader's heroism and decency is based in the fiction of a person who never existed. Okay. Then also look at the... Um, Uh, Look at this piece here from uh, Mother Jones, and this deals with the Confederate monuments. We talked about this a couple of days ago, and I'm going to deal with all this in in my uh, 10 week online course, my new 10 week online course from the Civil War to Civil Rights and Black Power. But this uh, shows a graph here of when the majority of these uh, Confederate monuments were built. They weren't largely built after the Civil War ended, right after it ended. 
They're largely built during two periods of time in the history of this country, 1895 to 1915. Uh, and you have Jim Crow being uh, made legal with eight, uh, Plessy versus Ferguson, 1896. And then you have the movie, The Birth of a Nation comes out in 1915. 1915 is the second year of World War One, And 1915 is also the beginning of the Great Migration. Then 1955, about 1955, to 1970 during the civil rights movement and they're built in opposition to uh the civil rights movement okay all right so uh visit our website africanhistorynetwork.com africanhistorynetwork.com you can register for uh, my new 10-week online course there from the civil war to the civil rights movement and black power 1865 to 1968 uh we do this on saturdays 3 p.m to 5 p.m eastern standard time Class that starts up July 24th. Click here for register here. It takes you to the next page and then uh, click on enroll. The class is regularly $130. Uh, it's on sale $80. We do the classes live. All the sessions are recorded. You can go back and watch it over and over again. Uh, and then also, if you'd like to stop for information, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, and then also through PayPal paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. All right. Uh, those watching on Facebook and YouTube, keep watching. We'll keep broadcasting for a couple more minutes. Uh, we'll be back Sunday. Remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you uh, next time. Peace. All right. How's everybody doing? Um, Okay, I'm going to post the uh, link here. You can register for the online course. Now, we have bonus content uh, for the online course also. We have bonus content uh, that you can start watching. And uh, as soon as you register, you can start watching. Um, if you like this type of information, you can support us through uh, Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show paypal.me forward slash the ahn show now this is our official cash app account here uh dollar sign the ahn show s-h-o-w and when you go to it it shows my name michael and shows my picture there these other ones are fake african history network cash app accounts our cash app tag is actually dollar sign the ahn show s-h-o-w dollar sign the ahn show s-h-o-w all right um i'm going to post a link here for the uh, new 10 week online course. And I, I did a, a preview of it. We have it on our Facebook fan page, the African history network. I've been rebroadcasting that as well. Uh, so if you take in the, uh, 10 week online course that I do, uh, ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade, uh, this new course here picks up where the other one leaves off. And, we'll be able to uh, get deeper into the history because we're going to uh, look at a 10 year period of history. Each class will look at a, a 10 year period of history, approximately 10 year period of history. And we're gonna go through history chronologically from uh, when the civil war ends, okay? Uh, the last year of the civil war um, in the 13th amendment, all of that, uh, 40 acres in the mule special field order number 15. Okay. We'll go through and look at all that. And each class will analyze an approximately uh, 10 year period of history to get a better understanding of what happened after slavery ended. Look at the progress that we were making townships. We were building things like this and how it all got reversed and understanding how laws and policies impact this and politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power and resources and the writing of laws, statutes, ordinances, amendments and treaties, their adoption, interpretation and enforcement and understand how this impacts us still today, how this impacts us still today. So when we have a better understanding of our history, see a people's history and culture teaches them how to deal with the problems of the past in the present and the future to meet the needs of the community. So when we have a better understanding of this history, then we have a better understanding of what we need to do today, which direction we need to go in, understanding the laws and policies that have to be reversed, that were doing us harm. Okay, so this is gonna be a fantastic class. Um, you can use this 
uh, class with your children as well, I would say is PG-13. OK, PG-13. And once again, we do the class live. You can join us in class live. It's going to be Saturdays, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All the sex, all the um, classes will be archived. They'll be recorded. You can go back and watch them over and over again. You'll still have access and still watch the class even after the class is over with. So next year, you can still go back and watch this. I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, video clips, etc. So it's going to be a fantastic class. Now, the um, first online course, uh, Ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Uh, we have a new class of that. Uh, running on Sundays, uh, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Sundays, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And uh, that's a 10 week course. Also, we deal with thousands of years of history there and we deal with uh, what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. We deal with the 800 year occupation of Europe by the Africans known as the Moors and uh, all of that. OK, all, all of that history. Um, so. If you want to register for that class, that class is $80, also regularly $130. Click here for register here. It takes you to the next page. Um, and uh, it takes you to the next page here, and you'll see the online course. Click on enroll. As soon as you register, there's bonus content that you can watch, and then because uh, you can watch last week's class and you'll be ready for class on Sunday also. OK. And then, yeah, we'll put um, the the links will be there for the day of the class for um, you to uh, log into the class also. All right. So we have those two online courses and the information is also at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All right. Uh, but these classes are going to blow you away. Okay, let me uh, look here. Let me make sure I got through everything. Um, yeah, but when see all everything that's taking place today is tied to history. Now we know that we're still dealing with the after effects, the the, the side effects and after effects of the legacy of slavery, Jim Crow segregation, things like this, Reconstruction being ended, uh, the U.S. Interstate Highway Acts in 1952 and 56 that drive. 41,000 miles of U.S. interstate highways all across the country, and they run through African-American communities, wiping out homes and businesses. If we look at what's taking place with um, Cuba, Jamaica, and Haiti, Cuba, Jamaica, and Haiti, they're all in the news now. These are three countries that Columbus and Spain conquered in 1492 and 1494. They, they are still feeling the effects of being conquered by the Spanish in 1492 and 1494, and then Jamaica becoming a colony of Great Britain, and Haiti becoming a colony, uh, Saint, uh, uh, Saint Dominique uh, becoming a colony of the French after they were a colony of the Spanish, and then having the Haitian Revolution, 1791 to 1804. They were still feeling the effects of what happened 529 years ago or so. So if we're still feeling the effects of what happened 520 plus years ago. You know, we're still feeling the effects of what took place in 1965, what took place in 1964. And we see this reversal that's taking place in Congress and in the state legislatures. We see this reversal of laws and policies trying to reverse gains that were made, trying to nullify the voting rights after 1965. And you needed the voting rights after 1965 because of what happened in Mississippi in 1890 at the Mississippi State uh, Convention and what happened in Louisiana in 1898 with the Louisiana State Constitution and Texas 1876 with the Texas State Constitution and in South Carolina and Alabama adopting the state constitutions that legalized poll taxes and literacy tests and things like this. And in Plessy versus Ferguson, 1896. That legalized Jim Crow. This is why you needed this uh, 1964 Voting Rights Act because what happened in 1896. So in, in this class, we're going to go through and analyze each class approximately a 10 year period of history to understand what happened to us, what happened in this country and to 
understand better where we need to go from here and understand how all of this history still impacts us today. And America must have a massive history lesson. The reason why we're dealing with these fights over Confederate monuments that are honoring traitors to the Union is because of this whole lost cause myth. And you have a lot of ignorant people who've been lied to about history. This whole lost cause myth. OK. All right. So how's everybody doing? We got Ruby, Rosa, Maurice. OK. Everybody uh, follow us on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. Turn on live notifications so you know when we go live. OK. Um, be sure to register for uh, the online courses and also all of my DVD lectures and digital downloads are at our website, uh, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. They're all there also. Okay, we have to get out of here. Uh, remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now, it's correct your own behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you uh, Sunday, and we'll see you in class this weekend. Peace. <laughs>